final item of business is members' business debate on motion 14266 in the name of Brian Whittle on transport infrastructure in South West Scotland. And the debate will be concluded without any questions being put. Would those members who wish to speak in the debate please press the request to speak buttons. And I call on Brian Whittle to open the debate uh, around seven minutes, please, Mr Whittle. Hey, thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer. And I am delighted to be able to bring this debate to the Chamber. And I can, can I start by thanking all the tireless work being undertaken by business and community campaign, campaign groups such as the A77 Action Group, the Julie A77 Campaign, the Air to Stranraer Railway Action Group, and the Mayball Bypass Committee and others and some of the members I welcome to the Chamber today. I think the fact that the chronic lack of investment in the South West infrastructure has been brought to light is due in no small part to their persistence. Deputy Presiding Officer, I have a map of Scotland with all the trunk roads in Scotland marked on it along with the speed limits. And you can drive from Ayr to Galsby in Sutherland, which is some 275 miles on trunk roads before hitting a 30 mile an hour limit. You can drive from Ayr to Aberdeen, 175 miles, or from Ayr to Berwick on Tweed, 160 miles before you hit a 30 mile an hour limit. Deputy Presiding Officer, you can drive from Gretna to Barcelona without hitting a 30 mile an hour limit. The reason this is significant is the trunk roads linking Ayr to Gretna to the port of Cairn Ryan are littered with 20 and 30 mile an hour speed limits through many small towns and villages. Towns and villages that are not set up to take the convoys of 44 tonne lorries and goods vehicles charging to and from the third biggest port in the UK and the biggest in Scotland multiple times a day. The impact of this volume of commercial traffic over the years in these communities is significant both in terms of health and well-being of their populations and the wear and tear on the roads uh, and housing. And I took the opportunity for travelling down to Cairn Ryan on a 44 tonne lorry and I would suggest to the Cabinet Secretary that this is a journey worth taking if you really want to understand the scale of the issue. Witnessing the driver negotiating the narrow streets of the town such as uh, Mabel and Minishant through the tight turns in Girvan and the slow climb out of Ballantrae on a narrow road as lorry convoys from the recently docked ferries has come the other way is eye-opening and quite unnerving in places. What's more, how big does a pothole have to be for a 44-tonne lorry to swerve to avoid it? Well, the answer is far too big to be safe for any other road, road users, and there are too many instances where this manoeuvre has to happen. The A70, the A75, the A76 and 77 long ago became unfit for purpose and over the years have become woefully so. The rail service is far from satisfactory especially when we look across to the investment in the Borders Railway. Quite frankly, we are sometimes relieved to be able to say there are any trains running at all with the issues at Air Station and the Station Hotel, and we seem far, very far from resolving that issue. Touching on this briefly, with the news that the final structural survey is not due to, uh, to some time in, uh, come out until sometime in March, I hope the Cabinet Secretary will join me in pushing for a speedy resolution to the questions hanging over the future of that building. At one point, Deputy Presiding Officer, when the rail link was closed, the A77 was also closed, effectively cutting off the southwest of Scotland. The diversion along the B-class roads, even less suited to heavy goods vehicles, adds about an hour onto a journey north. And I'm sure that journey feels a lot longer if you're in the back of an ambulance or you're trying on a bus to get to air for cancer treatment. It can be a round trip of over four hours, plus medical treatment. It's just not fair apart from, from anything else. I think the timeline of promises over the last decade is worth mentioning, uh, Deputy Presiding Officer. In 2010, the then First Minister, Alex Salmond, uh, promised significant upgrades to the 75 and 77 when opening the ports. Stena had invested £240 million and P&O £90 million on the back of that promise. In 2011, the then Transport Minister, Alec Neil, attacked the previous Labour administration for its lack of investment in the South West infrastructure, stating that it was scandalous. 2016, I attended a transport summit in Dumfries, chaired by the Deputy First Minister and Humsa Youfus, where they listened to the concerns of freight hauliers, shipping companies, businesses, local people and the politicians. 27, uh, 2017, I organised a meeting between the then Transport Secretary, Humsa Youssef, and the A77 and 75 Action Groups, where he listened. Last year, the new Cabinet Secretary for Transport met with the Action Group and listened. Jean Freeman has now annual newsletters proclaiming that this is the year for the Mayball Bypass, 
only for that to be shown just as empty promises. Deputy Presiding Officer, 10 years of talking and listening with very little action. We now have a South West infrastructure study that will feed into a national STPR2 paper, which will not be complete for another two years. Conveniently, I have to say, just before the next election, call me an old cynic. Yeah. It's easier to discuss what you will do than justify any action you're responsible for taking or not taking in this particular instance. When, while we're having this debate, the Cairn Ryan Stranraer route continues to be eroded. The Belfast to Dublin road is now motorway, and when offloading at Hollyhead, Holliers are straight onto a dual carriageway. Now, currently, about 45% of Northern Ireland trade with the UK comes through uh, the port of Cairn Ryan, much of it the so called uh, just in time goods, worth more than a billion pounds. Now, once this trade has been lost to other routes, history shows us that it's unlikely to return. This is not just about the, the future economy of the South West, it's about the economy of the whole of Scotland. We should have a cycle route from here to Shinrar, similar to the North Coast 500, to tap into the huge cycle tourism market. It would be a fabulous route which would attract thousands of enthusiasts. There are so many obvious benefits to proper long-term planning. And I'm sure uh, contributions uh, from the SNP benches will be quick to recognise the final arrival of the bypass for Mail Bowl. And I would like to ask the Cabinet Secretary if we have a contractor for that yet. But before we do, let's remind ourselves of a few of the other infrastructure projects elsewhere in the country which have been completed between the first pledge uh, from this government for the Maybold Bypass and today. The Queensbury Crossing at 1.34 billion, the M8, M73, M74 Improvement Project at 415 million, the Aberdeen Bypass, which is more or less complete at 745 million, with the contractor now asking for an increase of a bill to a billion, Borders Railway Line at 350 million, the Dalry Bypass at 60 million. If we add in the three billion commitment to dual and electrify the A9, that is a total that's the thick end of seven billion pounds of investment in infrastructure projects across Scotland, compared to a proposed 30 million in the southwest for the much delayed Mabel bypass. The plans submitted are far from ideal and show a lack of foresight from the Scottish Government. It will not be dual carriageway. Moreover, they have resisted calls to build bridges in such a way as to be able to convert to dual carriageway in future without major reconstruction. It speaks of short-termism and getting away with as little as possible. So I think throughout this campaign, uh, the ask has been entirely reasonable and pragmatic from all parties concerned. A long-term investment strategy and a level of parity investment in the South West. But after more than a decade of this government, it's clear that the South West of Scotland has never been a pr priority for this or any other Scottish government. Moreover, I think we have tried to keep the ongoing debate politically light because the outcome is far more important and far reaching for the South West than any political agenda. But we have had to drag ministers to the table to discuss this. And quite frankly, the SNP have only become interest, interested, it seems, because of the interest generated by other parties. This should not be beyond this place to come together and deliver what is obvious. There has been a lot of rhetoric over the last decade, decade and more that has resulted in a southwest infrastructure network being so neglected that to bring it up to any kind of standard that is fit for purpose will take an investment that makes it extremely problematic. However, Deputy Presiding Officer, the longer the South West is ignored, the more difficult that solution will become. We are beyond debate and discussion. The South West needs investment and it needs it now. There can be no more excuses, Deputy Presiding Officer. And we move on to the open debate and speeches of around four minutes, please. Emma Harper, followed by Finlay Carson. Thank you, President Officer. First, I'd like to congratulate Brian Whittle for securing this important de debate in Chamber this evening. This is yet another debate on how we can improve the infrastructure in the south of Scotland. Um, this demonstrates combined work from members across the Chamber that are from the South Scotland in, uh, constituency as well as region MSPs. And I highlight the absolute need for major infrastructure investment and improvement in the south of Scotland. It is important that we all work together across all parties for our constituents across the region. And I thank the Cabinet Secretary for being so supportive as well with my engagement with him. P&O ferries have seven crossings every day from Cairn Ryan to Larne during the week. And Stena Line have six daily crossings from Cairn Ryan to Belfast. Both companies are responsible for over 10,000 freight vehicle crossings every year. And all of these vehicles access the ports via the main arterial routes, the A75, 76 and 77. 
This is just an example of how important South Scotland is to the whole of the UK, as well as to the Republic of Ireland and the EU. Presiding officer, I have said in previous debates that there is a need for wider upgrades to infrastructure around South Scotland, particularly the 75, 76 and 77. These main arterial routes connect the South West to the wider Scotland, and businesses and local people and indeed our emergency services rely on these routes for their day-to-day -day business and operations and they're essential in bringing visitors, tourists and investment to the region. However, the roads are not fit for purpose and Brian Whittle has outlined that. It's causing much upset, much dismay and much frustration for the people and the businesses locally. I've listened to the people in South Scotland and I'm not alone in my desire for more attention and investment. Many people feel isolated and forgotten in our corner of Scotland. And I'd like the government to assure me that we are not forgotten and that the necessary work will continue. Back in August 2018, I hosted the meeting in Stranraer with representatives from both the A75 and A77 action groups. The meeting was attended by the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure and Connectivity, Michael Matheson, and representatives from both Stenaline and P&O Ferries, along with local politicians and MSPs, Brian Whittle, Finlay Carson and Colin Smith. The message from those who attended the meeting was unanimously clear that the South West of Scotland requires major transport upgrades, particularly on the three main roads that are mentioned. And in order to attract business and people to the region, which will allow our South West economy to flourish. I'm sure that the government understands how important it is for large business like Stena and p &O to remain in the region and small and micro businesses of which we have many also rely on these roads. These businesses are local employers, they attract people to the region, they allow for economic growth, and we need to work with them in order to ensure their future. There has been anecdotal evidence to suggest that the likes of Sten and P&O might even pull out of the Cairn Ryan and move their operations south of the border to Holyhead, where the infrastructure would be described as absolutely more favourable. This must not be allowed to happen, and I would ask the Cabinet Secretary for a commitment that he will work with and listen to the concerns of Sten and P&O as well as other businesses. Shortly before the Christmas recess, I attended a Transport Scotland briefing in Dumfries about the initial findings of the South Scotland Strategic Roads Review, and I was encouraged to hear the officials acknowledge the need for upgrades and that they have listened to the voices of the local people, and I look forward to seeing the results and recommendations published as soon as possible. Presiding officer, I know that the Scottish Government have invested in the 75, 76 and 77 with the creation of just one example, the Dunraggett Bypass and now the Maybole Bypass, which has been lobbied for for many, many years. This is what my motion was about late last year. We've witnessed lorries passing each other on blind corners on narrow cliff edge roads near Ballantrae. We've got dash cam footage of lorries passing three abreast on Gatehouse Bypass going up the hill. And there have been too many deaths on these roads. I hear the frustration of the road users. I know the frustration of the road users. And presiding officer, I declare an interest because I'm one of those road users as well. So in conclusion, I'd like to reiterate the comments and thoughts from my constituents, as well as from the businesses on the need for the major upgrade improvements to these roads. I'd also like to recognise the work that the Scottish Government has carried out on progressing with the South Scotland Strategic Transport Study. And I would encourage the Cabinet Secretary to publish the full findings and recommendations from the study as soon as possible. And I'd like to take the opportunity to stress to the Cabinet Secretary how important it is for this SNP government to ensure that the people in the South West are listened to, are connected to the wider Scotland, the Central Bill and the rest of the UK, and most importantly, feel as though they are not forgotten. Thank you. Finlay Carson, followed by Willie Coffey. Thank you, Deputy President Officer. I'd like to thank my colleague Brian Whittle for securing this hugely important debate this evening and for raising a matter of great concern to my constituents in Galloway and West Dumfries and that far too often forgotten and ignored southwest of Scotland. Being brought, born and brought up on the edge of the A75, I'm acutely aware of the need for upgrades to our transport infrastructure and that need has never been more urgent. Over the last 20 years, investment in Dumfries and Galloway has been significantly uh, reduced in relation to other major trunk roads. Just compare that to the time of Ian Lang and Sir Hector Munro, when they delivered new bypasses and other major upgrades at Glenluce, Newton Stewart, Pulneur, Kersluth, Creetown, Gatehouse of Fleet, Berluca, Ringford, Bridge of Dee, Castle Douglas, Dumfries, Cullen, and Annan. 
What a record compared to the one example we've had today of two bypasses, I think, we've seen from this SNP government and their predecessors. The local MSP, uh, SNP members merely skirted around this issue during Emma Harper's recent members debate on the subject. Now, of course, I do welcome investment in other poor roads in Scotland, but not at the expense of the South West. We just want equality and equity of investment. The current trend of routes in the southwest of Scotland, including A77 and A75, cannot ignore, continue to be ignored. In 2016, I attended the much-heralded transport conference in Dumfries, where the Deputy First Minister and Transport Minister promised action on transport. Two and a half years later, the people of southwest of Scotland are saying a big thank you for nothing. Mr Swinney, the Deputy First Minister, of course, has a history of promising and yet not delivering. On a pre-election visit to Sunrar in April 2016, he announced five key pledges for the south of Scotland, including further improvements to A75 and A77, calling the package an ambitious action plan for the south. And it did have a timescale, with Aileen MacLeod welcoming the announcement, saying she was confident it would bring a massive difference to the region over the next five years. But only by casting votes for the SNP can we ensure that these are delivered in full. Well, the SNP are in government, but up to now, the only thing they've delivered is broken pledges. Now, I'm committed to supporting the vital port of Cairn Ryan, and the Cabinet Secretary will have been left in no doubt as to the importance following the meeting we both attended in Shinrar in August last year, where both Stena and Pino attended. Now, the Freight Transport Association Policy Manager for Scotland said, for such a key route, the lack of consist consistent road surface is a headache for both freight operators local residents and it deserves urgent attention. Bypasses need to be constructed as a priority for the villages that the road currently travels through and we would urge Transport Scotland to investigate the possibility of duplicating the current A9 pilot scheme which uses average speed cameras and increased speed limits of 50 miles an hour to keep this key economic corridor to and from Northern Ireland open and functioning, functioning efficiently. Now, Cairn Ryan handles around 45% of Northern Ireland's trade with the UK, with around 9,000 sailings a year in Loch Ryan to Belfast, accounting for 410,000 units of freight. Growth in the route has grown by 1.3% over the last year, but that's outstripped by far greater growth and movement between the ports of Holyhead and Dublin. This will only continue if the inadequate quality of the A75 and A77 is not addressed. The feeling of being forgotten was extremely apparent last year when the trains did not run for over two months on the Air to Stranraer line. Whilst the safety issues at Air Station, at Air Hotel could not be ignored, full rail route closures in the future will not be tolerated by the people from Stranraer. And I seek the Cabinet Secretary's assurance that contingency plans are now in place to ensure that. The line is a lifeline from rural, for rural commuters heading for work, further education and social activities. Yet at times my constituents could have been forgiven for believing that they may not have ever seen a train running again in that line. Like Brian Whittle, I would like to play tribute to the campaign groups who are fighting tirelessly for the transport infrastructure upgrades in the South West. The A77 Action Group and the dual A75 Group in particular have highlighted why these roads deserve to be brought into the modern age. Presiding officer, it's time that those groups in the South West were paid more than just lip service. We don't need report after report and review after review. We don't need a government that just listens. We don't need a government that makes pledges. We need a government that listens and then delivers on its pledges. And what is that more greater than the southwest of Scotland? Willie Coffey, followed by Colin Smith. Thanks very much, President Officer. There has been substantial investment in road and rail infrastructure in the southwest of Scotland since 2007. And some of us who were in Parliament then, who campaigned for those investments, welcomed these, and so did the many hundreds of thousands of commuters who benefited at the time and still do. Why these works weren't carried out prior to the SNP taking power remains a mystery that perhaps only our colleagues in the Tory and Labour parties can answer, since those problems have been evident for many, many years. On the roads network, around 10 schemes altogether in the A77, and A75 were brought forward by this government and an investment of around £85 million was committed. The infamous, no, no thanks. The infamous problems and dangers at the Symington to Bog End Toll, just south of my constituency, was finally attended to by this government, making that road much, much safer 
for commuters. And it has to be said that the significant farming community that has access to that road at all times of the day too. I recall, presiding officer, some horrific incidents in this road over many years, yet nothing was done about it until this government came into office and got it done. And we should all recognise that, I think, and that particular investment alone was over £10 million and was money, money well spent. On the rail network, I, along with my colleagues at the time, campaigned for the introduction of the half-hourly rail service from Kilmarnock to Glasgow, which has been a huge success. Not only has the frequency of services doubled, but the investment in the stations, platforms and car parking that has gone along with it has transformed the rail service to Glasgow for people in Ayrshire. As I recall, that investment cost around £38 million at the time. It had been talked about for eight years in this parliament before 2007, but like the Symington improvements, nothing was done about it until this government put up the money and got it done. And that's just the Kilmarnock to Glasgow line. From 2014, over £146 million has been spent on rail infrastructure and things like track renewal and refurbishment and signalling improvements. Over the period from 2007, you can see from various parliamentary answers that about £190 million has been spent on the A77, 75 and 76 on maintaining these roads. That's a substantial investment and exceeds by some margin anything that had been done prior to this. When Labour was in power here, they managed to deliver one major project Excuse in the me a A75. moment, Mr. Mr. Coffey, excuse me a moment. Could the chaps on either side of me please extend the courtesy to Mr. Coffey that was extended to yourselves when you were making your own contributions? Yeah, Mr. Coffey. To, I'm looking forward to hearing the contribution that they might make to the debate, presiding officer. As I was saying, when Labour was in power here, they managed to deliver one major project in the A75. In the first five years of the SNP in government, over £36 million was spent on that road compared to Labour's £6 million. In the same period, on the A77 in South Ayrshire, this government has spent over £35 million compared to the previous administration's paltry spend of about £1.9 million. You can even look back into the mists of Hansard from our way back in 1989 onwards and see the various mentions of projects in Ayrshire and the South West that never got started. Dunraget was one of them, Benan's another, Burley and Maybowl, they were all mentioned as early as 18, 1989, all talked about, but all had to wait for the SNP to arrive to deliver. On the horizon, of course, the Maybowl bypass, another scheme that has been talked about for decades but nothing was ever done. My former colleague, Adam Ingram, MSP for Carrick, Cumnock and Doon Valley, was a great champion of this project, and it will be delivered by this government at a cost of about £30 million. Looking ahead to what the southwest of Scotland's future needs are, Transport Scotland is currently undertaking this work at the moment as part of its strategic transport projects review. For me, a key part of this has to be how we better connect to Ayrshire not just to Glasgow and stop there, but how to better connect Ayrshire to Edinburgh, for example, and the north, particularly Barrail, how to better connect us with the south of Scotland and the borders, and perhaps whether to connect us directly with the ports of Dublin and Dunleary in the Republic of Ireland via our excellent ferry ports in Ayrshire, a direct connection that I'm sure would provide a huge boost to the Ayrshire economy. So, presiding officer, far from a tale of lack of investment spun by the Tories and their Labour supporters. The facts are quite different and show that when it comes to delivering and transport infrastructure projects in the South West, it's the SNP government that has actually delivered. And it's this government who will continue to deliver for the people of the South West of Scotland. Thank you. The last of the open debate contributions is from Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer, uh, and thank you to Brian Whittle for tabling his motion. Can I begin by declaring an interest uh, as the chair of a local campaign group to reopen Eastrigs Railway Station on the Nith Valley Line in South West Scotland. In November, when we debated uh, in this chamber roads infrastructure in the South West, I stressed that fundamentally the issue is not simply about roads, it's about the economy. Much of the southwest of Scotland is plagued by low pay, rising unemployment and an outward migration of young people because of a lack of, of local high-skilled and high-paid employment opportunities in the area. There's no doubt that the lack of investment in their infrastructure, physical 
and digital has contributed to these economic weaknesses and acted as a barrier to growth for existing firms and to our ability to attract new businesses to South West Scotland. Both the A75 and the A77 are of strategic importance, not just to South West Scotland, but to all of Scotland, the North of England and Northern Ireland, providing clear connectivity to the ferry ports at Cairn Ryan. Yet both roads are simply not fit for purpose. And I have no doubt that had the ferry companies known there would have been so little investment from the current government on the A75 and A77 in recent years, they may well not have made the investment they have done in the ferry terminals in Cairn Ryan. At a time, the government is pledging £3 billion to dual the A9 from Perth to Inverness. It's a scandal that just 1%, 1% of that investment is planned for trunk road and upgrade projects in the whole of South West Scotland. The fact that the South West is a forgotten part of Scotland when it comes to, to road improvements isn't just confined to the A75 and the A77. The A76, which links Dumfries and Galloway and East Ayrshire, cuts through many communities whose, whose local economies have never recovered from the impact of the closure of the mines. Yet part of that so-called trunk road at Interkin Foot has been reduced to a single lane with traffic lights now for more than four years a symptom of the lack of urgency when it comes to road improvements in the area. Now, I pay tribute to the, the A75, the A76 and the A77 action group, some of whom are in the public gallery today for the work they are doing in highlighting the plight of those communities along those roads, being let down by the lack of that urgency and investment. Unfortunately, they don't share the view of Willie Coffey that everything is fine. But as the motion highlights, the inadequacies in our transport infrastructure in the southwest of Scotland does go beyond roads. Much has been said in recent weeks about the rollout of the new ScotRail timetable, but that new timetable has completely bypassed the southwest with, with no increase in services, though given the shambolic way it's been implemented in other areas with cancellations, delays and overcrowding, maybe that's a blessing. However, it remains the case that whether it's Transpennine Express or Virgin Rail from Lockerbie or Scott Rail from Dumfries and Stranraer and Ayr, services in the area are just not frequent enough and are holding back the economy of the area. The potential to get more people off our roads and onto our trains in the area is enormous, but that potential is not being realised. Now, it's an issue that hasn't yet been mentioned so far, but it's also no exaggeration to say that in many parts of the southwest, the bus network is close to collapse with recent cuts in routes right across Ayrshire and Dumfries and Galloway. And I can tell the cabinet secretary there are many more cuts on the way unless firm action is taken to grow investment in supporting our bus network in that area. I'm sure in summing up, the cabinet secretary will point to the current southwest transport study that is being carried out, which will feed into the strategic transport projects review. But the completion of that review is years, not months away. It's not clear how the South West study will influence the outcome of the wider Scotland wide review, or even how the many, many projects that I'm sure will be listed in the South West study will be prioritised for investment and won't simply become a wish list never delivered. But what is clear is the clock is ticking. We need to see a fairer share of transport investment come to the southwest of Scotland to support the local economy, an economy that simply cannot wait for the outcome of a review that is still years away. Thank you, President Officer. I now call my, Michael, excuse me, Michael Matheson to uh, conclude the debate for around seven minutes, please, Cabinet Secretary. Thank you, uh, President Officer. And I can, can I congratulate the member on securing time for this um, important debate. It's given me uh, yet again an opportunity to hear more about the problems, opportunities, the issues, the matters of concern about transport infrastructure within the southwest of uh, Scotland. Uh, quite a number of the points which have been raised in the debate here this evening are very similar to the points which were raised back in the debate on the 6th of November that uh, was taken forward by Emma Harper. And also echo many of the points that I heard when I visited uh, Stranra back in uh, August of last year, where I know a number of the members who are present here this evening uh, attended that particular uh, meeting along with local campaigners. Uh, one of the things I want to reassure all members, and I'm conscious that these things can become quite fractious in terms of uh, where priorities and spending uh, should be made. Uh, but the Scottish Government recognised the importance that transport links within the southwest of Scotland play. Uh, not just to those who live there, but also to the local economy, the regional economy, and also to our national economy. 
And as Willie Coffey rightly points out, although for some they may not like it, the reality is that there has been significant investment made over uh, this government's term of office. Although having said that, I recognise for some it just isn't enough. But of course, many of the projects that we've also completed in our parts of the country bring wider economic benefit to the whole of Scotland, which benefits us as a country as a whole. Down officer, uh, several members have made reference to the Mabel Bypass. What I can uh, confirm to the Chamber here this evening is that the tender uh, competition for the A77 uh, Mabel Bypass has now been concluded and is currently in mandatory standstill period. Uh, the winning contractor uh, will be announced at the end of the standstill period. Construction work is expected to commence early this year once uh, the successful uh, contractor starts his programme of work as they have set out. Uh, there's absolutely no doubt, President Officer, this is a, a project which will help to separate local traffic uh, from those travelling further afield, particularly that, those heavy goods vehicles that may be going to the port of Cairn Ryan. And I uh, had the pleasure of meeting uh, the Mabel Bypass Committee uh, a number of months ago, uh, a meeting hosted by uh, Jean Freeman, uh, to hear about their experience around uh, traffic problems passing through Mabel itself. Uh, they were pleased to hear about the progress that was being made uh, and I want to put on record yet again my thanks for their commitment on this issue over many decades. Uh, determined to see improvements made to Mabel, Mabel and the bypass uh, will be delivered uh, in the course of the coming year. I also recognise that the difference that this will make to a town such as Mabel will be very significant. It's estimated that it will reduce uh, traffic on the high street by approximately 50% and the number of heavy goods vehicles which we're passing through Mabel is estimated to be cut by some 90%. Uh, so there's no doubt this will have a significant benefit to those who live and work in the area of Mabel and those who are going further afield. So an officer, we also recognise uh, about the important role that our strategic road network has and also our rail network has as well. And A75 and the A77 provide uh, important links uh, to the, ports of, the port of Cairn Ryan, used by, for daily journeys uh, from uh, those who are going to Northern Ireland and those who are coming from Northern Ireland, whether it be freight or whether it be passenger transport. Many Scottish businesses in the southwest of Scotland and further afield rely on these transport links uh, to get goods and materials uh, and also uh, to make sure that they're able to access uh, key markets. What I can say to the concern that's been raised by Emma Harper uh, is that we fully recognise the important role that the port of Cairn Ryan not only plays to the southwest um, of Scotland, but to Scotland as a whole. And we want to see it continuing to play an important part within our economy. Then, officer, we're having to take forward a whole range of different programmes uh, across our transport network, uh, whether that be road, rail, uh, or freight, or air, uh, in very challenging uh, financial uh, circumstances. The fiscal environment uh, makes it challenging in having to set the priorities uh, that we want to see uh, our investments be made in in order to make sure they're invested in the right area in order to get the right type of return for that local area and for the country as a whole. Now, of course, uh, we want to support uh, economic development right across the country and the southwest of Scotland is no different to that. But there is a process uh, that must be undertaken in order to identify where those strategic investments should be made. And we have commenced uh, the second strategic transport project review. It's not something that will happen in years. It has already started. And the initial focus of that has been on the southwest of Scotland. Now, I understand a number of the members here tonight uh, attended uh, the opportunities which were provided to participate in some elements of that study, where briefing sessions were provided in Dumfries and air. And I want to thank those who took the time out of their day to participate in those events. The study is now moving forward at pace. Uh, since the debate on the 6th of November, uh, the stakeholder engagement programme has now been completed and work to summarise and report on the outcome from this is presently being taken forward. I was also uh, very encouraged to hear that there were some 3,200 people responded to the public survey and that successful uh, and the successful stakeholder events uh, which were delivered in Stranraer, Mabel and Dumfries. Uh, I'm also aware that the sessions in Dumfries and Air 
uh, allowed a number of the members uh, who are here tonight to participate in that event. Uh, so I want to take this opportunity, though, to put on record my thanks for those within the local community who participated within this particular event. If it helps, I'm happy to give some feedback, uh, sign officer, to members on what some of the initial feedback has come from uh, this stakeholder uh, uh, programme. It's reinforced uh, some of the areas where we saw them being, as being priorities and important, uh, particularly important uh, aspect has been access to the port uh, and the impact that freight has on the existing uh, road network, particularly the A75 and the A77. Uh, key issues which have emerged has been a, a call for improved integration between bus and rail services, uh, a call to consider the impact of freight traffic on the road network and how this can be reduced, uh, and calls to address the lack of resilience in the road uh, network when incidents do occur. Now that this part of the process has been uh, completed, presiding officer, uh, this will now be drawn forward into the next stage in the southwest of Scotland in looking at developing options to address the key issues which have been highlighted as part of this engagement process. That will also look at uh, the possibility of further appraisals into some of these specific uh, options and that will then uh, form part of the overall thinking for our strategic transport projects review. I recognise that members have come along this evening to put the case for the South West. However, I've got no doubt that members, the member just simply finish this point, but I've got absolutely no doubt that if it's members from the North East, from the North West, or from the South East, they would all be arguing for strategic investments to take place within their respective uh, regions. And as a government, uh, the responsible way in which we look at these matters is to consider where the range of priorities are right across the country and then to come to collective decisions on what would be the most appropriate measures to provide investment and support for in order to achieve the outcomes from the Strategic Transport Review. I'm happy to give yeah. way to Mr Carson. Just this once, Mr Carson. Thank you for taking my intervention. If the, the review that's currently being undertaken, if a report comes out and says there's time-critical interventions needed to invest in the road as a matter of urgency, well, will you commit to bring forward uh, finance to, to undertake those investments prior to a national review? Michael Matheson. Can I say, I do find it a wee bit rich of Conservatives demanding that we bring forward capital spending when the UK government are doing everything they can to cut our capital budget year on, year out. Uh, so I think uh, the member in terms of demanding capital spend is on pretty thin ice given the UK government's track record and its repeated cuts to our capital budgets. What I can say is the member will be aware there is a, there's a maintenance programme in there for dealing with any urgent matters that need to be dealt with. But the Strategic Transport Projects Review, this is the second of them uh, to be taken forward, is a key approach that we have to take forward to look at all of the demands right across our transport network. Whether that be a matter... No, whether that be a matter, no Mr Smith. Whether that be a matter, whether it's in road, rail, ferries or air, all of these matters have to be considered. In drawing my remarks to a close presiding officer, can I finish on the point regarding uh, Air uh, Station Hotel and the difficulties that the poor state of that building has caused given the risk that it posed to uh, the line in air? In order to take action, to make progress on this issue, because it's very clear, uh, consecutive administrations in South Ayrshire Council should have taken action at a much earlier stage, given the deterioration of that building, which they are responsible uh, to the local community in taking action on. But over a considerable period of time, it has not, they have not taken the action which is necessary. We as a government stepped in and created a task force in order to make sure that appropriate measures were taken and also to provide the financial support that is necessary to encapsulate the building in order to make it safe to allow the line to continue to be used. We will continue to do what we can, sign officer, to make sure that we get the right investments in our transport network right across Scotland, including in the southwest of Scotland. And I'm committed to making sure that we continue to listen to the views of those in the southwest of Scotland as to what those priorities should be. Thank you, everyone. That concludes the debate and the meeting's closed. Thank you.